Many people discuss the idea that we live in a matrix or a simulation, but few people break it down to what that actually means in pragmatic terms. I've read everything from Tom Campbell to Howdy Mikowski to Jason Brashears, people who try to explain what this matrix is, very effectively too, I might add. But I believe that in order to find the truth for yourself, one must dive through all these scholars at the head of their field in order to come up with a model that works best for you. So after pouring through loads of data to find the nuggets of information that creates a structured mental model, and after doing lots of internal work as well, I have come up with my own philosophical framework to explain the fascinating realm that exists around us. A realm which I call the frequency matrix. So for starters, I must note there is a very demonic frequency that exists here. It is the frequency that the majority of the radios are tuned to. By radios, I mean a human's mind. That's how it operates. The data that encompasses who we are doesn't solely exist within fleshy gray matter. Just like how a little man doesn't exist inside of a radio when you hear the voice come out of it. So currently in the month of January, 2023, there is a demonic frequency that the majority of the radios are tuned to. And th this is an issue. However, you don't need to destroy that frequency. You just need the radios to turn away from it. It's important to note you cannot destroy this machine because it's just a frequency. You can't destroy a frequency just like you cannot destroy a wave on the beach. So the question is now, why did we incarnate on a realm where there is a demonic frequency here? Well, it's for a variety of reasons, but for one, in the etheric realm, it is easy to be great, but difficult to be good. In our material realm, it is easy to be good and difficult to be great. We come from infinite conscious awareness that can create anything for itself. It can create beautiful worlds and people. So in that infinite power of expansion, why would we care to stop and think about doing what is good? Innately, we wouldn't. We would just focus on creating more greatness for ourselves. So we need some time in the material realm to appreciate how hard it is to become great and learn how easy it can be to do good. Because why would anyone assume we come from an innately loving God, especially considering how many old texts say humans are a reflection of divine source of God. However, humans hardly act godly. Also, by that logic, then wouldn't God also be a reflection of humanity? That would explain the evil God of the Old Testament, the one who smited people during a time when the masses were engaging in child sacrifice. The people of that time were engaging in terrible acts, so of course their God wouldn't be loving. However, the story of Jesus, whether you believe is real or parable, helped lead people to a more godly frequency. And this is where the frequency matrix comes in. At the far negative end of the frequency, we have the sad frequency, which stands for Satan, Ariman, Demiurge. If you research any of these concepts, they're all going to fit. But the reason I use this acronym is because there's negative stigmas certain people have to each, of, each one of these words. Not only that, but a really good indicator in this realm of whether you are close to the sad frequency is if you feel sad. So the acronym serves dual purposes. Then on the other side of the frequency, we have the God frequency. This is Christ consciousness. This is understanding the importance of giving your power to yourself and not giving your power away. Now, it's also important to note that God frequency and sad frequency cannot exist on their own. It needs conscious intelligence to actively create and feed these relay stations. You need to be an active participant in building the God frequency in order for it to remain as such. Just like how the controlling class work overtime to socially engineer and control us under the sad frequency. The controlling class here have created the greatest empire and dominion over humanity that has ever existed in human civilization, but there is no good in them. For those of us who are awake during these unprecedented times, one thing we are here to learn is how important it is to be good once we return to our unlimited powerful forms of greatness, unless we want to become like the controlling class. Now, in terms of the memory wipe, I don't need to remember any of my past existence to understand the lessons I've learned in this one. So whether we were tricked into a memory wipe or we chose it so that we wouldn't long for past lives, either way, it allows us to really focus in on this experience. An experience is the only true way to gain wisdom. So how can an experience be had if one is not immersed in the moment? So the memory wipe strengthens the immersion, which strengthens the experience, which strengthens the wisdom. 
This is why we actually gain more wisdom when we receive the memory wipe, as opposed to if we could recall past lives. Because if the goal was to simply absorb as much info as we could like a database, then the memory wipe would be a hindrance. However, data collection is not the goal here. Wisdom is. Hence the idea that wise men learn the most from fools. So now we come to the question of uh, the NPC, or the different types of incarnations here. The NPC question has been grossly misunderstood. And it is actually a trinary question and not a binary one. The three types of earthly incarnations outlined in the ancient Gnostic texts that Pisti Sophia would be the Helix, the Psychics, and the Pneumatics. They exist here like a trinity, or a chemical evolution, like the journey of H2O from ice to water to steam. Now the Helix are spiritually unconscious. They're identified with materialism and base instincts. They're difficult or impossible to awaken. Psychics make up the majority. They are spiritually conscious, instinctively feel there is more to life, and can be awakened with effort. Pneumatics are spiritually awakened adepts of the esoteric and exoteric, incarnated to spread truth. Now, some may be surprised to hear that I didn't say Helix are the majority. They are not. Because it is necessary to not downplay the insidiousness of the Helic. They are not simply fools. They are vacated. They are psychopaths. The majority of humanity are not psychopaths. The majority believe in voting, they took the shot, they work hard in their 40-hour work weeks, they have a family that they love. They believe in the news, but they are not vengeful against people who question the mainstream narrative. They are oftentimes too preoccupied with their kids or their jobs to really question what's going on. The Helix, on the other hand, are the staunch defenders of the system. And the reason that they are is because they've given all of their power away to the system. In fact, that is how we judge who is a helix, psychic, and pneumatic. We establish this by the amount of power one gives to either themselves or the sad frequency, or anything else outside of themselves. The helix gives all their power away. The psychic fluctuates between the amount of power it gives, and the pneumatic gives all the power that they generate to themselves. Which may sound selfish, but when one empowers themselves, they actually make the world a better place. So the most common example of giving one's power away is being a slave to one's emotions. Hence why Helix think with emotion instead of logic. The Helix believe the dominant system in place is what gives them power. So sure, Helix may hold positions of power with high accolades, but they are 100% dependent on the dominant system to confirm for them their power. The dominant system is what gives them power. It does not come from within for them. They got to where they are by going along with whatever the dominant system wanted. That is not rising up by using one's own power. That would be allowing oneself to be possessed by the sad frequency. That is why these Helic people seem to be a different incarnation from us. Because they are powered by the sad frequency, and we generate our own power. So again, to reiterate, both the Helix and the Pneumatics make up a very small percentage of the population in this current time, and the majority of the population are Psychics. They are not, as people say, NPCs. However, many Psychics here have chosen to resonate slightly more with Helix than they have Pneumatics, but that of course can always change. So in order to really drive home what the Frequency Matrix is all about, I will end this by reading two pages from David Icke's new book, The Trap, which is also a book that explains what this place is, how it works, and how to escape its illusions. All right, and it says, Our thoughts and emotions generate frequencies related to those particular thoughts and emotions. The totality of these frequencies are collectively represented as an energetic field that we know as perception. Different thoughts and emotions, points of observation, will produce different perceptions and frequencies in this perceptual field. It is through this field, this aura, that we interact with the simulation field and the infinite field of possibility and probability. Different perceptual states will connect with and manifest correspondingly. Different possibilities and probabilities. Here are two simple examples. Your perception is that you are an insignificant little me who has no power to influence your life experience and no potential for anything beyond the mundane. You are therefore a follower of those you do believe have that power. You know your place. It is for others to reason why and for you just to do or die. 
This limited perception and self-identity is represented energetically in your perceptual field, which reflects in its frequencies that same state of limitation. Your limited perceptual field will connect with like frequencies in the infinite field, and the possibilities and probabilities that you interact with will reflect your perception of self and reality. A feedback loop is established between you, your perceptions, and the frequencies those perceptions represent in the fields. And in this way, your perceptions become a self-fulfilling prophecy and manifesting an experience to match your perception. A little me perception becomes a little me life. What you believe you perceive and what you perceive you experience. Indeed, if your perceptual field is so limited and low in frequency that you are doing little more than interact with the simulation field which is designed to dictate your whole life. At that point, the matrix has you, and that's the very goal of the cult and its masters. By contrast, if your perception and self-identity is one of limitless possibility of being an expression of infinite awareness having a brief experience called human, your interaction with the field is transformed, and so is your life. Your expanded sense of reality and identity becomes a correspondingly expanded perceptual field, resonating at much higher frequencies, and you interact with the infinite field of possibility and probability in a far more expansive way. Your expanded perception becomes an expanded experience. Awakening is simply an expansion of perception and self-identity out of the fast asleep five senses. Those who go through this process, and the numbers are now phenomenal, notice that synchronicity comes into their life that wasn't there before. Daily experience becomes peppered with fancy seeing you here, what's the chance of that, and bits of luck appearing just when you need them. This is nothing to do with luck. Your expanded perception is interacting with expanded swaths of possibility, and far more becomes possible. You are creating a different reality from different perceptions. I experienced all this myself. A quote I saw on the internet captured the process. Accidents happen, that's what everyone says. But in a quantum universe, there are no such things as accidents, only possibilities and probabilities folded into existence by perception. This is the last thing the cult wants you to know, when not knowing is the foundation of human control. The cult and its initiated assets are well aware that perception becomes a reality, and that if they control your perception, they will control your life. Global society is structured to this end through cult-owned education, media, and Silicon Valley to dictate the information that becomes perception. What is the fascist censorship of media and big tech in the COVID era except control of information to emphasize the official narrative and silence any challenge to that? While these psychopaths are directing your experience by downloading your perception, they want you to believe that what happens to you is random chance. They want you to believe in good luck and bad luck and arbitrary happenings. The worst nightmare of the cult is for the population to realize that perception becomes reality. People would then have the power in their own hands, or minds, to change their reality. This is where the simulation comes in with its fake reality to confuse and control. The simulation field shares the same space as the infinite field, and the idea is to manipulate the perceptual fields of the population to attach to the simulation field. The interaction that follows mimics that with the infinite field, except the simulation is not infinite and both limits possibility and entraps the mind in a reality that appears to be real but isn't. Oh no, that can't be, the world is natural. Okay, so what is natural? What do you have to compare with natural to show the difference? If everything you see is the simulation, the answer is that you have nothing to make that comparison. At least with a virtual reality headset, you have normal reality to compare, and even virtual reality is becoming so sophisticated you soon won't be able to see the difference between headset reality and normal reality, which is itself a simulation. We are being taken into a multi-leveled virtual reality illusion from which we are not supposed to escape, but we can. So yes, that is the end of the passage there, and I believe that we can escape whatever limiting walls this sad frequency builds around us. And we can do this by becoming as pneumatic as possible. Now, I don't know if it's possible to give all your power to yourself or all your power away. I believe that this trinary scale is fluid. We probably fluctuate throughout the day. But the key takeaway here is to give as much of your power to yourself. Empower yourself and you will be limitless. Now is the time to become limitless. A pure reflection of source, of God. So please make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video and more information on this will be coming soon.